What's up, string players? Jeremy here, and uh, today we're going to talk about bow chopping. All right, so maybe you are a cellist or another string player that has dabbled in the world of the chop, and uh, maybe you're having a little bit of trouble. I found that it can be a challenging thing to explain well and to teach well, and uh, I'm going to hopefully uh, try to clear some things up. So the way that I think about the boat shop is, first of all, that it's kind of like, I want to relate it to something that maybe you've already done before. So if we think about spiccato, spiccato bow stroke, right, that we use a lot in classical music, well, it's very similar to that in terms of uh, the motion that we're doing with our fingers and our wrists. So we want our wrists to be nice and loose, we want our fingers to be loose, we want to be relaxed. Um, that is probably the single most important thing of factor in getting a good shop and probably one of the most important things in just playing with good technique in general. But what we're going to do is we're going to take that spiccato motion and what we're, we're going to first of all mute the strings with our left hand, just rest it lightly for now because that's going to uh, keep unintentional notes from sounding and hopefully give us a cleaner chop sound. And then what we're going to do is um, we're going to start as if we were going to do a spiccato from off the string. And what we're going to do instead, instead of letting this, the bow bounce, we're going to let the, the bow just kind of stick into the string. So you can see how I have a little bit of a wind up almost with my wrist. It's flip my wrist. Okay, almost like you're, <laughs> you're like whipped somebody with a wet towel. <laughs> then uh, that'll give you an idea as to what this motion is like. Okay, and as soon as I land, I, I sink all of my arm weight into the bow. Okay, common mistakes that I've seen students and other cellists make and string players make, they do this. The first most common mistake is they let the bow bounce off the string. You can hear I kind of get a percussive sound, but it's, it's not nearly as crisp, not nearly as tight. So I need to make sure that weight stays right in the string, okay? Um, the other thing that a lot of times people will do is drag the bow after they make contact with the string. So you're doing a lot of things right if you're doing this. It means you're getting a good, good contact with the string. It means you're getting the weight in the string, but it means that you're pulling after the fact. So we want to make sure that the moment that the bow hits the string, that we stop. That's going to give us our most crisp, rhythmically tight bow chop, okay? Um, some people like to aim for a spot further down in the string, towards the bridge, and you can experiment. I don't think that this is essential to getting a good shot, but it definitely can help. And you know, a lot of cellists and other string players will build patterns um, based off of like sort of two or more locations on the string. This can be really, really useful, but um, it's there's not one you know right way to do this necessarily. As long as you're getting a good sound, then you're on the right track. Okay, and then of course the chop by itself is nothing more than, than a sound, right? We just do it by itself. It, it's not really that interesting. It's really more about what we do uh, around the chop and how we like kind of decorate the chords and notes that we might be playing. Yeah, so anyway, try this out. Let me know uh, how it's going for you in the comments. And um, I'll definitely get some more videos uploaded in the near future where we talk a little bit more about you know, how you can turn the chop into a, you know, a cool pattern like, like this maybe. <laughs> Thank you.